those brothers. Flown in daily. And they, they do, the and they pick. have forever. Yeah. Uh, because one of those brothers is still back in Japan, or was at least when they started it. That's yeah. their whole kind of Premise. value proposition. Um, I want to get on that cargo plane that's going back. And yeah. Like, I'm going to catch y'all. I'll do the Tuesday, Thursday run with y'all. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we stack up really well from an American sushi perspective. I think the if we can talk shit a little bit talk about the sushi want. scene in in America? Denver – I I feel like we have really good sushi. I feel like we don't have really good sushi experiences. Uh, what are we missing from the experience that, that you're referencing? Tell us, Jeff. I feel like the good spots, the sushi dens, the izakayas, the uchis, uh, sushi ronin, um, all have really, really extreme menus. And one of the, like, the premier sushi idea is that chef's choice tasting right and while those occur right you can do that at uchi you can do that at izakaya and sushi den that's where i think we fall short and i think the reason for that is not at the expense of any chef here but because of the american custom to well we just don't have the fish selection to really make that what it is when you do that in japan first of all you pay out the asshole but don't you pay for out the asshole for everything in Japan? No. Is it not? No, nope, that's a lie it, that I, you know what, actually edit this out. <laughs> that is, n- yes, that is everything so is true. so expensive you can't there. go. <laughs> no, it's, it, sushi is very expensive over there because there's a uh, tremendous mm-hmm. price that they put on, on fresh seafood. Okay. But ramen over there is dirt fucking cheap. Uh, coffee over there is less expensive than it is here. I, in general, most of the things that are kind of trendy and therefore expensive over here are, are just staples over there and not expensive. Sushi would be kind of your, your anomaly there because it's but fresh it fish. But the difference is, yeah, when you go to like a sushi and you get that dinner, that chef walked to the fish market that morning at like 4 a.m. and found something that excited him and that's what you get. And a lot of times here, through no fault of anyone's except that ge- geographically we just don't fucking do that. You, it's you, because we're spread out too much that we don't have like a local market. Like, because you see that well, in other countries where yeah. they're more packed on top of each other. Europe is the same way, where you go to there's a local market that feeds that local area, or there's a fish market that everybody hits. Like, you all source kind of in the same repertoire. Instead, we have this Cisco fucking U.S. you know Shamrock Foods group that powers over the food. I mean, scene. we do that, but also the fish that we get is just the fish that gets flown in. It's just we get. We don't. We, we get. don't have an ocean, right? Like, well, like if you I do this in that. Seattle, and and Seattle is probably. I mean, I haven't really done a lot a of Japanese work in in art. Hawaii, but like in Seattle, which I would say is where I've had the best stateside sushi experiences, they have a literal fucking ocean. Like, the chef went and picked out clams and picked out razor clams, and that's how we got. You know, that's, that's how we got to that dish that night. And he'll tell you that. We just don't have that here. If you want an oyster, you have to order that oyster and it has to get here. And that's just fucking living in Denver. Like that's, that's no one's fault. But I I think that. I grew up on the Gulf. I don't blame Denver for that. I thought you were more criticizing the, the American experience. I mean, American sushi is just very different. Yeah, that's what. In general. And that's okay. I, but I don't expect just, Denver to hold up to, like, Tokyo or anything like no. that. No. But I just wasn't sure, like, as someone that is obviously sees a lot of the world and a lot of food in every other country. And these are the same questions I asked my buddy Jeremy Jacobowitz, who does Brunch Boys. Yeah. And he did. Yeah, yeah. He went from New York to Japan. He was like, it's just the greatest place it's ever. Just, so I asked him all these questions. It's special, dude. He's like, it's just great. It just is what it, like, it, it's so now just. You, I have to go, man. Apparently. You have to go. You just have to go. What we need to do is start doing these collabs where I'll sit behind the camera and we'll cast and couch people while you do it. I'll get them talking. We'll get, and I'm a cheap. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, I'm cheap. You can throw my ass in class. I'll bring the. Yeah, uh, I, I don't, I don't fly I'm, special. Yeah. I, I flew first class once. Like on an international trip, and it it fucking ruined me. Because you're like, I, oh, I know because what. now I know what I'm missing every time I like get in a window seat, and and like just try to conk out for 12 hours. And I know that when I when I took this first class trip, I flew first class back from Beijing. So Beijing to I think I flew back into SFO, and there was like a it wasn't just like a snack counter. There was straight up like a dude who would make you a hot snack whenever the fuck you asked for it. 
Like straight up, like just like you could order, hey, can I have- hey, I'm kind of hungry. Will you make me a grilled cheese? And you go, yeah, I'll have it right out as many times as you wanted, whenever you wanted. And, and what happens and if you're on the other side of that curtain? You just smell grilled, grilled cheese. cheese. There's no grilled cheese. But they would, they also gave me one for the road. Because I was like, this was so nice, gonna have a grilled cheese, uh, while I wait for my connecting flight. And he goes, yes, I'll pack it up. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> God damn it. Come on. I gotta be rich. It's the one worst. Guy. It's the fucking worst. We need to, so scratch that last idea I had about us doing like a casting couch show where we grill the people. Sure. Let's, let's just create an app instead. Okay. I don't know exactly what that app will be. But it doesn't it matter. Like it just the needs app to. Yeah. People do a lot better than the people asking questions. There's a there's a scalable way to make money by letting your app make it around the clock in microtransactions. I think we should get into mobile gaming. That's mobile where the money. Gambling? Yeah. That That's fun? where the money is. I mean, gaming, can, gambling, all of it. I, Microtransaction, I, the shit out of the world. If you could find a fun game where there's a kid that wants to buy a one dollar upgrade every five hours because his parents are just. Uh, Letting them have the phone or the tablet. That's how you do it, dude. We'd be geniuses. And then reroute all of our customer service through an IVR rather than a call center so that you never actually get anyone on the phone driving you just short of bonkers and forfeiting your $1.99. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We could be on a beach in Bali with taking pictures could, of our food with our phones. We could have a man making us grilled cheese going anywhere in the world. God damn it. Sweet life. Well, before we go, we have a couple tough questions for you. We still haven't gotten to it. We wait till the end so I know what yeah. time to write it down. But what, <laughs> you work for yourself. Unless you, do you have a PR rep? No. Oh, do you have an agent? No. Oh, well, then you, you can ask me if you don't want to answer this. But if you had to have sex with any cartoon character, who would it be? Is about? this the question? Yeah. What a fucking great question. Thank you. It could be anybody. Any cartoon We've had character. Say animals, we, not realizing that there's people out there, and they're like, "Oh shit, no, 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 no!" Like we've had people say Kermit and Miss Piggy. Right, uh, but how many people just pick like a hot character from Archer? Oh, I like didn't, my first, my first thought is like I didn't, Lana from Archer. I didn't even think about Archer. <laughs> like I just want, when you think of it, like Jessica Rabbit would be on that list. Jessica Rabbit would totally be on but that list. I have not. Holy crap! How have we not thought about dude Archer? Cheryl and Lana from Archer? Is my answer. Yeah, Cheryl's the dumb redhead that's yeah. like really hot. Yeah. yeah. Who's also very I'll rich. Who's also Griffin. very, very rich. Oh, yeah, Lois right. Griffin. Lois sure. Griffin. I'm sure that's an you answer. Have seen those pictures online of the, where they, yeah. Of course, yeah. Everybody knows what we're that's talking a, that's about. That's a very weird. It's a thing. That's a very weird thi- thing that it's like people are really into that, yeah. is, is like, like the fetishization of like what you watched as like a preteen. I'm assuming yeah. more men than women, but. That's totally a generalization. But it's a weird thing when you're like, why the hell did they do that to Marge Simpson? It really is. It's weird. It's weird. And they'll, like, tie her shirt up and, like, they'll be, like, mm-hmm. bent over a table. They'll do that weird, uh, like, bandana thing that doesn't, right, like, cover Marge's hair because her hair is it's the like same the size. the girl that's flexing from the U.S. Army yeah, it, yeah, Rosie like the that. Riveter. Exactly. What was her name? Rosie the Riveter. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. You're the one that's smart in this conversation. Remember that. Um <laughs> All right, so you did really well there. Lana, that may be our best answer, Chris. Never, question, ever, ever edit this, this out. This, may have this been, has to hit yeah, the air. That may have been the best answer yet, because you would think like Jasmine. You know, it was yeah, wild. sure. Yeah, you 100%. Think, like, yeah, you get into Disney princesses, uh-huh. 100%. And then we had someone say Miss Piggy, and they're like, oh, no. Oh, no, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't think. I, uh, and we we're like, and their PR rep was like, can we cut that? Can we cut that, please? And I was like, yeah, that question probably doesn't make it to air a bunch. Hentai, someone from Hentai okay. said that that was their jam. And then I was like, whoa, so you like really so you like, actually you're do this. ahead of me. Their PR rep was like, we're launching our new alcohol next week. We can't have our owners talking about how he jerks off to cartoons. Uh, so <laughs> if you – it's happened twice that we've been like, damn it. Oh, that's too bad. That's a like, great question. I like you. that question. Thank that's you. beautifully designed. I can't take credit for the question, but it is a great one. Um, but you're not out of the woods. These are our two kind of fun ones that we bring to the conversation every week as well. The first one is the Stone de Petit question of the week. But before we do that, Jeff, if all of our followers wanted to kind of follow your journey as you go back to Japan and across the globe, give everyone a quick rundown. Where can they find your social media pages or if someone wants to hire you for a wedding or yeah, sure, eat whatever. sushi off of naked bodies? What, how do they find you? Um, the best way to find me is on Instagram. I'm Jay Fearberg, F I E R B E R G. Uh, that's probably. I, don't know why I said Fireberg. I don't know. I'm fine with it. People call me whatever the fuck they want. I don't care. 
Um, that's probably the the place to find me, honestly. Okay. Um, you can DM me there. You can find my email on that page. Are you verified on Instagram? No. Have you tried? No. I mean, you have a f- ton of followers. I'm sure you could be verified fairly quickly. Yeah, I don't... I mean, I honestly, I have no fucking idea. Um, I don't know if... So, <laughs> with Twitter verification... You out, you'd be like, that's the first time I've heard of that. I mean, I know what it is. I just... Yeah, but I don't... I just... I don't know that I care enough to be verified. If it's easy to do, I'll do it. Because I'm, oh. I'm sure that check is probably, like, a cool thing that people care about. Well, what it, it does now is it distinguishes you from everybody else in the story. So, like, when I'm scrolling through my stories, oh, cool. it'll show that it I'm distinguishes verified. you because you have that little blue mark that nobody else does. Okay. Well, I guess i got to get verified. Do it because then it brings more attention to your page and more validity. And it, it helps you avoid getting shut down. So, if you ever try to get into the cannabis industry, but that's, you won't get shadow banned like we got. I, I came on this podcast to do all of that. Is that, is that not what I should have done? I know you did this completely backwards. Okay, great. <laughs> yes. If you thought this was going to help your company or your, <laughs> your, 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 your career. I'm sure it's going to do absolute wonders for me. Yeah, just find me on Instagram. DM me. Let's work together. I'm, I mean, if you want to eat sushi off my naked body, that's fine. No, dude. I was thinking I don't know. more the other way around. If someone wanted to, you to document them having oh. the sushi. Have yeah, I'd, I'd do sushi? that. I'd do that, too. No offense. I don't think anyone was going to. I don't think so, either. But I'm, I'm, I'm open. Ab guy. I'm open. I saw that you have a gym in your building. So yeah. Keep grinding. You got this. Um, um, okay, so that was a great trailer. Here are the last two questions of the night. The first one, let's say you did an all-day shoot. Maybe it was fucking out in the heat, and then you had to go inside and deal with screaming kids. It was a long day. You get home. You kicked your feet up. What is that guilty pleasure, late-night snack? You're about to you know, have a glass of whiskey, smoke a bowl, and eat something. What is that something you always go for? If it is early enough in the night that I can get, like, delivery in yeah, that moment, that. my fucking jam is spring rolls. Is what? Spring rolls. Spring rolls? Yep. Yeah, I mean, I Like a nice that. grilled chicken spring roll from, like, uh, Saigon or Fa on Six. So give us some of your spots that you my get My shit. Here. Besides, like, I was the like, sushi den. Do you have some places like South Fetty that we are missing out on? Um, yeah, but I don't even know their name. There's a spot at Federal Mississippi. That's where I normally go for pho. It's got okay. blue Vietnamese writing. I could not tell you the name of it, but it's where it's I've good. gone for pho for like 15 years. It's, it's the fucking jam. Um, I think uh, pho 96 I think is... pho 66, like right next to Star Kitchen or something. I think you're right. I think you might be right. Everybody everybody knows where Star Kitchen is, yeah? For a little while. Got it, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm always hitting that up. I think uh, what the pho is my delivery spot of choice okay. because my spot of choice does not deliver. Um, but what the fu? I probably saw and was like, yeah, I'll, I'll try you out. Um, but yeah, that's my like... It's like shopping for wine off the label. 100%. You're on delivery. Yeah, like, what the fu? Hell same. yeah, dude. Um, Bow ties. But yeah, that's... Clever one as well. That's, that is my jam. Like uh, two, three days ago, I came home from an all-day shoot. It was 101 degrees or whatever. Oh my God. Uh, I'd been lugging heavy gear around. It was eight o'clock at night and I was absolutely in the, you know, I'm not done working Fuck yet. It, I, Fuck it. I just need to order food and like go take a shower and like cool down. That's what I ordered. That's yeah. what I always order. That's the standard for me. I love it. That, and that's the answer folks want. Like you have, not only are you, you know, heavily entrenched in the community here, but also the food scene and you've fucking been here since the beginning of your time. So like if you, if you don't, can't put me on your favorite genre of food in your hometown and your city where you make money off food, then you would be a pretty shitty guest. So you did really <laughs> well there. This last question is going to be the toughest part of your day. Okay. It's going to be like passing a pineapple. Let's see how you do. Um, it's called the the Last Supper. You have to have three guests join you for dinner before you die. They can be dead or alive, but they cannot be friends or family. Who are you going to have over, and what are you going to eat? You will be judged by the whole crowd. Okay, well, what we're eating is... There's a there's a night market in Chiang Mai, and we are going uh, specifically to like the bazaar portion, and we're gonna split like some pad thai and some uh, masaman curry and some green curry and some pad sayuk and some pad priking. Like we're just going all Thai. 
real hard. I'm about to die, so I don't care how hot it is because like I don't have to shit it out later. Oh, so we're going tie hot. We're going, tie hot. We're going temperature hard. 